Okay, Shalom Aleichem everybody. I hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful Sukkot, a wonderful Tishrei. And we here in Yeshiva are on our last day or two of Ben Azmanim, and now we're gearing up Mir Hashem to the Newsman. We're very excited about the Newsman, but I wanted to share with you a, uh, two brief ideas on Parshas Bereshis. Um, the first idea goes as follows. We are told at the end of Perak Beis, towards the end of Perak Beis, Hashem creates Adam Harishon, and Lo Tov Heos Adam Levado, Eselo Ezer Kenegdo. It's not good for Adam to be by himself. Let us make for him an Ezer Kenegdo. And what I would anticipate that the very next pasuk ought to be is the creation of Chava. But that's not what we find. We find that the Torah then tells us, Vayitzar Hashem Elokim Min Ha'adama Kol Hashem creates the animal kingdom. And then the Torah tells us, strikingly, Hashem brings each member of the animal kingdom to Adam Arishon to give them names. And Adam Arishon is going to give each of the animals names. And then there's an unbelievably striking Rashi, a few, few Pesukim later, Rashi writes, not only did Adam Arishon give them names, but he actually slept with each of the animals. And then finally the Torah tells us, after this process, Ula Adam lo matza ezer kenegdo. And Adam did not find an ezer kenegdo. Very, very striking. As if to suggest that Adam Harishon was actually going to find an ezer kenegdo amongst the animals. That he was going to go ahead and somehow his spouse is going to be an elephant, a giraffe. Very, very strange. So I think clearly what the Torah is trying to tell us is a very fundamental idea, and that is that for Adam to properly appreciate Chava, his significant other, his Ezer Kenegdo, he had to first experience a profound and real feeling of loneliness, of aloneness. And the purpose of the creation of the animals, bringing the animals before Adam Arishon, having him name them, perhaps even having him sleep with them, is to have him understand that, no, this is not a good fit for me. And every single animal has its pair, male and female. And I, says Adam Arishon, I'm all by myself, I'm alone. This feeling of existential loneliness. And once he has that feeling, then it's appropriate, he can, be, he can readily appreciate the significance of Chava in his life, so the significance of a spouse, the significance of building with someone else. And perhaps that's a very fundamental lesson. I get the question a lot from alumni, when's the right time? When, when do I know I'm ready to get married? When should I start dating? And perhaps that answer is this very same is so. If you have that feeling of loneliness, of aloneness, that you feel there's something fundamental that's missing, so then you're ready, then it's a good time. If you feel that everything is good, life is good, you feel whole, you feel complete, you feel a certain sense of shameless, perhaps you're not ready to share your life with another. However, once you feel that feeling of I'm missing something, I'm missing something fundamental, then you can go ahead and appreciate what it means to share of yourself with someone else. And that's perhaps the lesson that the Torah is telling us in this story of Adam. Yeah, we break the action. Let's have Adam needs an Ezer Kenegdo, the animals, very, very strange. No, the purpose of presenting Adam Harish with the animals is to have him feel in a profound and real way that feeling of loneliness, and then we'll go ahead and create Chava. Then he can forge with Chava, building a life together and achieving his life mission with her. That's idea number one. Another idea I want to share is a few psukim earlier. In the beginning of the parasha, we're told about the Briyas HaOlam, and every day has its particular creation. And every day after the creation, Hashem observes His creation, Vayar Elokim, Kitov. And He says, He observes what He created, and He says Kitov. Strikingly, on day two, there is no Kitov, but you find a double Kitov on day three. What was created on day two? So the Torah tells us that the Mayim was created and the Shamayim. Shamayim and Mayim were created on day two. And on day three, there was a completion of the creation of the Aretz with the separation of Mayim into Eretz and Yam and you had Yabasha, you had dry land, you had the oceans, and that was complete on day three. And Rashi tells us why was there no Kito on day two? Because the creation of the waters and the land masses was not complete on day two. It was complete on day three, and therefore that's when you find the Kitov. Uh, the day two's Kitov is found on day three. So some of the Mepharshim ask, and I want to highlight the comments that are made by the Rabbeinu Bachia. Rabbeinu Bachia comments, he says, good, okay, the waters, the land masses, 
that was not complete on day two, and therefore that doesn't deserve a kitov. That's going to be pushed back and deferred to day three. However, Shomayim was completed on day two. So why is there no kito for the completion of Shomayim? And here, and here Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, and I want to read you his words, he says something very, very significant, very profound. The Yesh Li Lomar, this is found if you have the most Sadr of Cook version, page Chav Zayin. The Yesh Li Lomar ki mikan raya atzuma ki ha'olam ha'shofel bizman shi Yisrael osin ritzona shal makom hu ikra ha'metzius. Sha'af al pi, shenigma b'yom sheni b'riyaz harakia v'hamalachim, lo haya b'zeh shlemuz ad shenigma meleches hamayim b'shlishi. What I would suggest Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar is saying is that what this world is really all about and what life is all about, certainly the hashkofa of Yadus, we are not a shamayim oriented religion. We are about this world, olam hazeh. And the fact that the heavens were completed on day two, that's amazing, that's great, but that does not warrant Kitov. Because we here, Yadus is about, it's a this world religion. Of Salavet should express this in modern philosophical terms in his works, Halachic Man, also found in all the men of faith. This is already found in the Rishonim, in the words of Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, is that while other religions are pushing and preaching Olam Haba, the next world and 72 virgins, etc., things of that nature. That's not what Yadis is all about. We are about this world, the Olam Ha'asiya, and even though Malachim are created on day two, and Shamayim is created on day two, that's not what the Kitov is for. Kitov is about this world. You notice it's very striking, but the Torah does not explicitly discuss things like Tchiyas HaMesim, things like Olam Haba, things like Mashiach are not explicit in the Torah itself. The Torah deals with Olam Hazeh and perfecting Olam Hazeh, perfecting ourselves in Olam Hazeh. And yes, indeed, there's a reward of Olam Haba at the end. And Yadu certainly does have an eschatological vision of Yemosa Mashiach and Tchias HaMesim. But that's not the message of the Torah. The message of the Torah is to accomplish in this world to achieve mitzvot, asiyasa mitzvot, Torah, chesed, perfecting oneself in this world, and that's already embedded in the beautiful words of Rabbi Nebachia on day two of creation. When Shamayim is created, that doesn't warrant the kitov, because at the end of the day, it's about this world, not about the heavens, but about aretz, yam, etc., and that's where you have the kitov. It's an important, important yesod, an important lesson to keep in mind is that we really want to achieve tremendous things in this world, not necessarily because of Olam Haba, because that's ultimately our vision, our mission, is to accomplish in this world the world of the Olam HaAsiyah.